Hello everybody and welcome to Marma J Dow Live. Today we're going to be talking about the Marma J token. Um, and I suppose as the title of this video is, it's going to be kind of an informal token white paper. So usually what a white paper is, is so by the way i'm chloe uh founder of marma j if i didn't say that already um the marma j foundation but what a white paper usually is is explaining the token why is it there maybe some token economics that are established into the token potential use cases of the token um so the marma j token is a utility token um it's there, there are plans for the marma j dao for example to adopt this token in some sort of informal governance for now. Um, eventually the plan is to have the Marmaj token or an iteration of the Marmaj token to be used as governance in the ecosystem. But for now, for this version of the token, we are just experimenting with token distribution. We are experimenting with the ability, for example, to provide liquidity, uh, to educate our community. Um, and the way we did that was we used marmaj.near. Um, so if you go to our DAO, for example, you can see that marmaj.near is one of the three council members for the Marmaj Foundation. And we created a token. So if you go to tkm.farm yourself and you log in with near, you will see this way where you can, you know, a token creation form. So what we did is we said we're creating the Marmaj token. Awesome. The token symbol. Uh, Marma J. Actually, we called it, see, it already exists. We called it the Marma J token. So, for example, if we ever create a version two, it'll probably be like Marma J V2 or something like that. Or maybe it'll put a little, a little dash between there. Who knows? Anyways, the idea is you could type in Marma J token. Uh, we used Marma J as a symbol. For our total supply, we have 2119. 21,019 tokens and we used 18 decimals so that it would be in line with the ERC 20 standard with decimals. If you wanted more decimals, you could just, you know, tick it up. You could have 21 like near has, for example, or you can do whatever you want here. You can upload a token icon. So maybe we'll come up with a new token next year. Right. And you could put a different token icon that we have the owner account. You cannot. I mean, for, oh, yeah, wow, it lets you change it. So for example, Marma J dot Sputnik dash Dow dot near. So when I was creating this previously, first of all, we didn't have a Dow on Sputnik V2. We only had a Sputnik, a Dow on Sputnik V1. So if you actually want to see when, how we created this token, you can go to our previous hackathon submission for the creators and communities hackathon earlier in May of this year, May 17th, we actually submitted this. And we have this post uh, called Marma J Foundation Social Token. We, we submitted this payout to the Social Tokens DAO. And we had the idea where, you know, we wanted to get, you know, get involved with some token economics. Uh, our payout, so we could see, was Marma J dot Sputnik DAO dot near. And so that's available if you go to the Sputnik dot fund. Uh, so this UI looks quite different than Sputnik DAO V2. So on Sputnik DAO V2, it's Marma J dot Sputnik dash DAO dot near. This DAO is upgradable. We can do multiple different function types. For example, here we can call custom functions. We can pay out in a fungible token. So we can pay out in Marma J dot TKN dot near. So this is the Marma J token. Um, but with our old DAO, so Marma J dot Sputnik DAO dot near, it was, it's a lot less, um, uh, you can do a lot less with it. So for example, the functions that are available to us are just payout, and this payout is just in near tokens. Um, the other proposal we have is add, adding a council member, removing a council member, changing the purpose, or changing the vote period. So obviously not as much functionality, but that's what we had to start with. Um, the, so you know, the Marmaja DAO exists with the purpose of supporting creatives who aim to spread love and positivity throughout the Web3 community. So if that's you, come on board, join our chat, earn a bounty, you know, there's lots to do. Currently, the Marma J DAO is where the Marma J council members vote on proposals submitted on the near blockchain. So this will take you to the version one of Sputnik on Sputnik.fund. Um, this is, you know, uh, each proposal to the Marma J Sputnik DAO also requires a discourse forum link upon submission. So, for example, if you look at our previous DAO, you'll notice that there's actually forum links here. So, for example, um, 
you know, changing the purpose of the DAO because we upgraded to V2. So for example, if you click this forum link, it'll show you about the, the DAO and you can see that actually when you go to our DAO, it links to V2. So all of the back, you know, off chain uh, collaboration information that happens, happens on the forum currently, gov.near.org. Um, and so one of the main funding avenues is gonna be like the split royalties and fees from NFT sales on Mintbase, for example, that was our idea. And our idea, we still we actually still do this, as that funds from our mint base store. So if we click here and we go to Marma J, um, you'll we have all these NFTs that go for sale, and the splits on these NFTs go to Marma J dot near, and in some cases, uh, Marma J dot um, Sputnik dash DAO dot near. So the, the DAO as well. So royalties go to marmaj.near because it's an account we have full control over. Uh, we're not really worried about, you know, 10 years from now, um, will we still be able to receive funds from there and, and um, like watch over that account? But for example, if royalties were going to our old DAO, uh, we actually don't use this anymore. So if you go back, you'll see we have, uh, you know, 61 uh, near in here still. And the idea is that, oh, look, one of them, you know, one of them failed. We set a, a payout to move the funds from V1 to V2, but we actually needed other people to vote with us and it actually didn't go through. So eventually um, we'll get a vote going to move the funds from our V1 DAO to our V2 DAO, but not to actually, you know, $600 now. Uh, so that's pretty cool. We got, that was funding from the previous hackathon. Um, so it's great to know that it's still there. Uh, but the idea is we don't want royalties going to that account forever. We'd like to have royalties going to account we actually um, for the DAO that, you know, that we can um, continue to manage. So uh, as such, all NFTs minted by the DAO on Mintbase will use marmaj.sputnikdao.near as the funding address in the split royalties and split fees. So this actually was changed. Uh, this was our first idea, and then we iterated on that. So the idea was that the DAO will earn off of every sale forever, and this cycle will generate, re generate revenue for the Marmaj DAO to support uh, incoming proposals to our community members. So the general idea was to have Marmaj trading on multiple different trading pairs on Ref Finance. Uh, the idea was to have you know 0.24% fees, and if you want to read more into this, you definitely can, you definitely should. But I we also have a post you know called DeFi uh, Marmaj Foundation DeFi Management. And this shows where we actually are. So where we were at 12 days ago is, you know, we have a WEF W. And I've talked about this in previous videos about how, much, how the Marmaj Foundation is using REF Finance. But we have, you know, liquidity on multiple pairs. And the liquidity is managed, again, by the individual account Marmaj.near. Again, the goal is that the Marmaj DAO will manage all these liquidity pools eventually. But right now, we don't have the capacity or the bandwidth to, be, to, to manage things that way. Um, you know, for example, Sputnik DAO contracts aren't audited yet. So if you look at this, uh, our DAO, uh, first of all, it's in beta, uh, it tests in prod, not audited. So if you actually see our most recent, um, our most recent proposal on our DAO, for example, is that, you know, we were trying to farm from Berry Club through our DAO. And we actually couldn't do it because when we called this function, um, first of all, uh, we used a deposit of, um, Sorry, the first time we did it, we used the deposit of one, and so it failed. And then the second time we did it, um, we need to use no deposit, and we can't do that on the UI. So these are like the, the small issues here and there that make it difficult for us to, you know, fully have our DAO managing everything yet. But that is the plan for the future. But going back to our main token, all the information for the margin token is right here. So total supply, you can register the token so that it shows up on Ref Finance, so you can you know swap and trade, and you could add it to your wallet so it shows up there. So for example, uh, let's see if it's, I'm not even sure, oh, I'm in the wrong account. So let's say if we go to marmaj.near, I'm not even sure marmaj has any, uh, mar yeah, there's not even any uh, marmaj tokens here. But if you, if you registered it, you'd see it in your wallet. On Ref Finance, for example, um, when you try and swap, if you wanted the Marmaj token to show up here, you'd have to, you know, and now, you know, one Marmaj is worth, you know, 11.17 die. And so the if you look at um, our liquidity, you'll see exactly as I said, Marmaj.near manages liquidity across all of these pools, the majority of them being the Marmaj token pools 
And then some of them are the, you know, Gitcoin pools because we got a lot of Gitcoin tokens and airdrop. And so we decided to use them for liquidity. So that's like a very high level of like, we were at a hackathon, we decided we want to have some token with which to set up a foundation or a base level um, of economic stability for our community. And it really serves as a way to help us distribute resources to our community. So, you know, we're done talking about token farm. If you want to make your own token, it will cost you about, you know, two and a half near. So go for that. Um, this is where we started, you know, we had an idea to have our social token, you know, one of the ideas as well was to have a trading bot, for example, we want to have a wallet that displays, uh, your near token, your fungible token and balance. Actually, there's a DAO, hype DAO, that has a website that actually does some of this. So if we go to hype DAO.XYZ, this is all open source. You can create the same if you know TypeScript, if I believe. But you can, this is, so this is the DAO. So this could be what, you know, you see when you go to marmaj.org or the Marmaj DAO website, you hit connect your near wallet and then it'll redirect to the near wallet like normal. So if we wanted to log in, we would hit allow. For me, it's going to redirect um, to my ledger. I mean, like I have to sign in for my ledger to get this to work. And I'm currently on the Ethereum app on my ledger. And then now I have to add a key. But once you've gone through that, this is kind of the flow we wanted to have, or we still want to have for the Marmaday function. Now you're logged in, Marmaday.near, um, and you can kind of come down and it'll say how much hype you have. So eventually it'll show how much Marmaday you have. As you can see, there's a leaderboard here. I don't think the leaderboard is working at the moment, but the idea is that this is taking data from off chain. So the idea is we want to make it so that in order to come to our DAO and add new proposals, in order to actually add proposals on chain, the idea is that we are going to require, the DAO is going to require that someone has to actually stake at least one near, so one near or more, to be able to submit a proposal on chain. Now, this is probably only going to be for uh, payout proposals, uh, also for custom functions, of course. Um, argue, arguably, if someone wants to submit a, a proposal to create a token, they're free to, we're probably gonna vote it down and take the bond. Um, and if they wanna try and add a council member, that's also not something that will be part of the token, for example, but for any kind of payout or custom function, or maybe any proposal, we haven't actually decided yet. This is something the bandwidth, they still have to test and go through a lot of these uh, procedures. But for now, the idea is that, you know, again, you'll have to hold at least one Marmaj token. So people will go, will go to marmaj.org, they'll log in with their near account and they'll see, okay, I have zero Marmaj. Um, they'll be able to either go to ref, you know, swap, pick some up. That's not really the purpose though. The purpose is that they will go and submit a bounty payout. So if you look at our DAO, you'll see that there's actually been quite a few payouts of marmaj.tkn.near. So I, for doing these videos six days a week, I submitted a bounty for myself to get 240 near. Now, usually I just distribute those tokens to friends and family, um, to get them onboarded. But you know, that would be a, per a use case for the token, for example. Um, someone wrote a blog post. So if you ever want to see like what are people doing to earn Marma J tokens currently, you can just come to our DAO, uh, click the forum link that people, you know, that again, each proposal is supposed to have a forum link. And you can see, you know, there's a bounty to create a blog post for the foundation. I am requesting a payout for the blog post here. So this blog post was, you know, on the Mars of the Marma J blog. And so it was 15 Marma J to Precious Princess.near. And this was the original sponsor proposal here. So all the information is right here on the forum. You can click the link and you could actually read, um, you know, the, the blog post if you'd like. You could see what happened in this proposal and, and, you know, what happened in the blog and all that fun stuff. So, you know, we've explained, you know, why did we create a token? We've explained how community members are currently earning this token, how they're currently submitting proposals. I mean, all someone would have to do is come here say, you know, what, I'd like to get paid out, please. Um, if you come to our, uh, you know, our subcategory on the forum, you'll be able to see that we have our bounty right here. So blog or video content creation uh, for the Marma J on near, and you can earn 10 Marma J. We did lower it because um, 15 Marma J was quite a bit uh, as near was pumping and as Marma J was pumping. But as you go to the top, you can see all the information, you know, we reduced it. You can see all the information about 
technically, we usually want guides or support on how can you, community members can use Mintbase, as we said. Um, NFT creation and you know sale is one of the main ways we are hoping to earn more funds for the Marge Foundation and the DAO. Um, how to use Ref Finance, how to use Sputnik.fund, so how to use currently you know the DAO, or how to use V2 as an example. Um, how to use the wallet, and there's some like ideas and you know for content creation, helpful resources to help you get started. Um, but you can write whatever you, you can write, write about whatever you'd like. Um, so for example. On the idea that you can write about whatever you'd like, if you go to the Marma J blog right now, we have a couple of Axie scholars that are from the Philippines. They play Axie Infinity on our account um, and earn funds that way. So they wrote a blog. One of them wrote a blog post. Um, so Axie Infinity, the power of blockchain games. And the idea is this will support the Marma J Foundation, not only because people understand about what's happening um, currently with, you know, uh, the Marma J Foundation's axes, um, and also, you know, they would also have a better understanding of how blockchain gaming works in general, because we do plan on actually um, getting involved with a dApp on Near called Pixel Party, and I'm sure there's going to be many different uh, gaming app, uh, uh, play to earn games on Near, and, you know, so... Nicole Lesura, uh, Lesuria, ah, I can't pronounce her name very well, I've never actually heard it in real life. Uh, they've actually met this person in real life, but they do play uh, the game. We They earn small, smooth love potions, and we pay them on a, a bi-weekly basis. Um, and you can read all about their experience. So they're writing about their own experience, they're writing about the scholarship they earned, and they're actually adding um, a few of their own their tips of advice, for example. I think there was, uh, yeah, they were saying, um, yeah, like to be honest, the money I've earned in this game is higher than my full-time salary. That's why I understand why some people resign from their jobs and become full-time Axie players or play any other play to earn games. In my opinion, stick with your job if you're still happy with your work and play Axie Affinity and have multiple sources of income. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, people from the community are able to write their guides, but also give their advice and it really supports the entire Marma J community. So that's kind of like the high level of why we have a token and how it supports the community and ways that you can get involved and earn some of the token. You know, once you do earn the token, you can go on ref, you can go swap it. You know, you, you, again, what we talked about, you can add the token to ref. So for example, when you deposit, um, you come here, you hit add token, you go marmaj.tkn.near, you hit add token, and now all of a sudden you're able to come, deposit it, swap it. Maybe you want to swap to die. You know, so maybe you earn 10 Marma J in that bounty. Maybe you swap five uh, Marma J to die. You know what? Let's just show what it would look like. Because why not? I feel like a lot of times I talk about these things, but we don't always show it. Okay. Now, when we swap this, we're going to pay some fees. So we're going to pay 0.19% fees. Um, and part of those fees go to liquidity providers, some of those fees go to ref uh, as an exchange. So when we, you know, so when we saw this, for example, um, now the price is a bit lower, uh, but it'll show you that there's this fee right here. Okay, so 0 0.01 of the fee of the swap is gonna go to the pool. And because the marmaj.near is actually funding this entire pool, as I swapped that, the majority of the fees actually went to Marmaj.Near. Some of the fees went to Ref. Um, but the idea is the community members now, as they earn Marmaj and they take part in the ecosystem, they write blogs, they create videos, they maybe do some developer work. For example, um, we're actually giving $1,000 in Marmaj uh, to whoever completes our open challenge at the moment. So for example, we have this open challenge payout um, where we're getting $5,000 in Near, for example. Um, at the end of the hackathon to give out to the winner, but we're actually going to reward every single unique submission with a thousand dollars in near tokens. So at that point, it was around 70 Marma J. Now it's a bit more, for like you know, 100 and uh, like 80, 90 Marma J, maybe 90 Marma J. The point is, we're going to distribute these tokens. And now, if someone wanted to sell half and keep some and die, they could then view the pools, right? When you search pools, I mean, you can scroll down. Uh, for example, and see all the different pools. So you can see Marma J Gitcoin. Uh, one Marma J gives you about 1.5 Gitcoin. Uh, you can see Marma J W near. One Marma J gets you about 1.3679 near. But if you just type in Marma J, you'll see that there's a Marma J uh, die pool. 
right? And if you wanted to add liquidity to this pool, you could take, you could hit max, for example, and that should take all the die you just got when you, when you sold, and then the rest of your Marmon J. And you'll see it's a bit less, actually. Uh, so it's not exactly five. So you'll have a tiny bit of Marmon J, hopefully, uh, left over. So we can hit add liquidity. Again, I've got to unlock this bad boy, which is all right. Um, there we go. So, you know, if you want to, I mean, you should read the more information tab. It'll tell you exactly what's happening. So for contract, V2, again, the V1 contract had a bug, so they had to fix it. So version two of Ref Finance on near, we're going to add liquidity to pool 10. Uh, that's, that's the 10th that's pool that was created. Um, and this is the amount, uh, 4.98 near, and then 55 die. The reason they're just off by the decimal places. So if you really wanted to like count the decimal places, feel free. We are going to allow, and I'm going to see the same things on my ledger again. So I have to actually reapprove it on my ledger. And then boom, look at that. We just deposited liquidity. We are now a liquidity provider. Uh, we've earned some shares um, and we'll show all of this uh, very soon. So basically what I did was I took some of my Marma J, I went to the swap, I sold it, I sold five. I got 55 die. Now the rate's a bit lower, it's 54 die. So if I went and bought some uh, Marma J now, it would go up a little bit. But the idea is we went to pools, we deposit, we put some of the liquidity in. Now we have more shares, um, for example. And it's kind of hard to see on this. So we actually use dashboards to try and understand this a bit better. So there's this near tools dashboard works very well in my opinion, at least for tracking pools. This is like a demo chart and a lot of this stuff isn't fully um, there yet, but this whole, you can see how much value is locked in um, ref, the number of farms, the number of pools, the number of tokens, it's pretty cool. But we're gonna go straight to pools and we're gonna kind of, we're gonna go straight down to the 10th pool, right? This one we just talked about, pool 10, we added liquidity here. We can check the details out and we can actually check out the liquidity as well. So you can see that it gives you the date and time quite nicely, and it also gives you the, the timestamp. I know, um, but you could see who removed shares, you know, who put shares in, and you can see I put four point nine five of token one. Token one is Marma J. So if we come back here and we go to Marma J, um, and we look at this. This is kind of the reason why we have the Marmaduke token. We don't only get to distribute the token to our community um, for support in the community, which is awesome, but we also get to have them learn how to also come back and support the community on their own if they so choose. Um, so the idea could be that by taking, you know, token one, Marma J, and then token two, right, which is die, we, we discover, you know, 55.148. And remember, right now if I swap, five marmot j i only get 54 so the price is automatically changing as people are making trades um, and the idea is we know who put the tokens in we know exactly when they did it so for example august 21st is when we reset the liquidity pools now september 13th we add a little more liquidity and this is kind of a lot easier way to see what's going on with your account or what's going on with your pools that you might create. And for us, what's going on with the, with the Marma J pools. So this allows our token to create a base level of support for our community. It allows us to, you know, to distribute the token. It allows the community members to also support the Marma J Foundation, for example, by providing liquidity, um, maybe gaining some more price stability for themselves as they learn how to use and navigate the ecosystem. Um, so as I said, the idea, and there's also Sodaki.com, uh, for example, this is where we act with some of the volume. Um, so as those trades are happening and as the price is going up and down and up and down, as I said, there's some fees being taken by Marmaj.near. Now, it's kind of hard to understand exactly how much funds are going through, but on an hourly basis, Sodaki will show us how much volume is happening per hour. So. If we scroll down, we can kind of try and look for Marma J. So we can see that there was actually, you know, two Gitcoin tokens. Again, it, it, it kind of rounds and it's not very accurate to the US dollar value, but it'll tell you how much of this token on the left here. So how much of, so right now it's Gitcoin. Um, how much Gitcoin was traded in the past hour on pool 14 was two. And also there was one Gitcoin traded on pool 13. 
one Gitcoin traded on pool 16, and that's all from the Marmaj Foundation. No one else owns any Gitcoin pools or created any Gitcoin pools. Um, then you can see the Marmaj token. The Marmaj had one token trade in the past hour on pool 10, and which we just traded. Uh, and it had at least one token, one, one token trade on pool 13. So this can kind of give you an understanding of you know how much volume is going through the pairs. Obviously, it'd be much more helpful helpful for us if we're able to just say, okay, how much volume uh, went through on the Marma J token over a certain period of time. But actually, let's go back to ref chain tools because this is kind of where I'm hoping we get some of these uh, tools coming from. So as we look at tokens, I'm oh look, I'm hoping we're able to go like this. Just show me the Marma J token. And it shows, but I would really love to be able to say, you know, show me the, not the liquidity, but I mean, you could see like marmaj.near. This should work, shows all the times we've added liquidity. There you go. So now we can actually see anytime anyone has added liquidity on any pool, which is actually pretty cool um, to be able to look in and see. For example, one day our DAO will be running liquidity, it would be super cool to see. You can look up anyone. So let's let's be kind of so. Let's look at our council members. Uh, let's look up. Let's do Rebecca first. Put her on blast. So you can see Rebecca near has tested out lots of different stuff. Uh, so you know there's near uh, Ref. There's Skyward W near. There's Marma J W near. Oct W near. N Die W near. So you can see the dates and times. And you know the plan for the Marma J Foundation is to be able to then reward community members that provide liquidity on Marma J pools. So for example, one of the ideas we have soon is to, you know, on the Marma J Endai pool, because this is a, a pool that I think will train lots of our community members on how to, you know, use stable coins, what the value is, and you know, when the market starts going, so the market's been pumping recently, that it all sounds good, near goes from $2 to $10, oh my gosh, that's crazy. But then as near starts to drop, people start to wonder, okay, well, you know, I'm not earning my value then, right? I'm losing value as the token drops. But maybe if they learn how to, you know, sell some sell some near when, or sell some Marma J at the top and buy some more at the bottom, it might help them understand how that might work with their other investments as well. Um, I don't think charts are up yet for this, but it would be really Oh my gosh. There's charts. That's I, this is the first, uh, this is wild. This is the first I've seen this. We have token history charts. So this is the, what I wanted. I mean, this was, this is beautiful. This is one of the main reasons. Anyways, this is wild to see. Um, so this is pretty cool. Um, this shows you the price of the, the Marma J token. It has an all time high of almost $16. It's pretty cool. Um, and you can see that September 2nd, it was around $10 and now it's come back down. So this is actually a perfect example of exactly why we use REF. So if someone earns some Marmaj tokens here, they earn 10 of them, it's around $105, let's say, right? Now, at 100, you know, around here, if they sold their, their Marmaj, so a huge dip, right? If they sold their Marmaj here and bought it back here, they'd earn more Marmaj over time. And so the idea is if we can teach the community how to um, you know, interact with decentralized exchanges with a, with a, a low value asset like Marma J, just like a, it's a, it's a utility token, doesn't really, it's more just to, to earn and then to, you know, to learn how to get some assets out. It could be a very, um, what's it, a low stress way um, of interacting with these financial applications on chain. And then kind of like, uh, I think CoinGecko has a pretty good um, overview as well. So hopefully the Marmaj Foundation will be available here soon. But you can see, you know, for example, NGTC, the current price on NIR is $4.41, but there's been about $10,000, $11,000 of volume a day. So CoinGecko as a larger uh, dashboard would be really great to be able to show what the value is of, of or the volume, sorry, that's going through. So reasonably, CoinGecko is going to be where we look hopefully very soon for our 24-hour volume. Uh, near tools, we want to, I want this on the website. Um, this is amazing. So like now we can see the token price, the charts. I'm actually going to screenshot this. This is awesome. Um, 
and I'm going to share it in the Marwa J chat because this is probably one of the coolest things I've seen. This was like the dream. This was like the idea of, I mean, I just showed you our hackathon um, chart and I showed you that our, our goal or idea was to have charts and people sign in and they see the graphs and they see everything that's going on. So that's pretty cool. Um, we show our finance. We're going to give funds out to the DAO. Hopefully we'll have something like this. Uh, you know, log in with your near account. Um, the idea is to incorporate this whole login with near idea with our DAO. Okay, so you know, you'll be able to go to let's just show it right here. You go to mamadi.org, right? You'll be able to, like you see here, log in with near and see what you're logged in with. Awesome. So we have a tab right here that says app. You log in with near. And the idea is you should be able to, from the Marwa J website, right from right, right here, oh, we actually just talked to a developer today that might be able to help us out with this on the, on the front end side of things. But the idea is you should be able to add a new proposal, right? Hit payout right on the Marwa J website. And then, you know, because you're already logged in, um, maybe it'll just try and pay you out to, but you'd be able to put your receiver account. Okay, so let's say you want to pay out uh, Bianca.near, you put a description. So the idea here is that you'd be using a forum link. And what HypeDAO has done really well actually is, where is it? Posts. They actually incorporated their forum with, see, forum highlights. They have their forum on their website. So it would be really cool is if, for example, we could have, you know, forum highlights or some, you know, proposals on the actual website. And then someone can just, you know, you're logged in, you click, submit payout proposal. And then it would take all the data from the forum, it would put it right into a proposal for you, and we wouldn't even allow people to get paid in here, we'd just go straight to, it wouldn't even say fungible token, the idea is it would just say Marma J, um, but in the background it would be marmaj.tkn.near, and the amount would come you know, from the bounty amount or the forum, so it would be you know, 10 for now for the bounty we have up, and then they would just submit and go forward. Now on this submission section, now when I click it, you'll see it'll redirect me to the wallet and I'm going to have to go through some sort of check. Actually, I think it's going to make me put a description in. Hello, don't pass this. I'm not even going to anyways, this, there you go. Now it's going to go here. Now when you hit more information, you'll see that this is quite basic as well. What's happening is the Marmaj DAO contract. Someone's calling the function, well, someone being whoever's logged in, so marmaj.near. So imagine this being on, you know, the marmaj.org website, they get redirected, you know, so the description, hello, don't pass this. Um, but the idea is when this gets approved, when this person clicks allow, the DAP on the back end is going to check, is marmaj.near, do they have at least one marmaj staked in the DAP? So... Currently, let's deny that real quick. Uh, so currently, the Marma J DAO has about 15, 14 or 15,000 Marma J tokens deposited. You can't actually see it currently because it only shows the near amount, but on CLI, you could see it. Um, the idea is right now when you're logged in as Marma J near, there's no way of actually seeing how much Marma J you have. Um, there's no way of seeing how much you staked, but the idea would be like, what if instead of saying staking contract, um, it just showed, you know, um, you know, staking amount, like staking, you know, how much Marma J tokens have you staked into this DAO? Um, and the idea is you need one or more, like I said previously, in order to submit a payout proposal. So now what we could do in the front end is if it says staking amount right here and it's zero, we would actually gray out the, the button to add a new proposal. We'd say, um, sorry, but you need at least one Marma J deposited um, in order to submit a proposal please, you know, click here to deposit Marma, to stake Marma J into the DAO. And so that would allow you to, you're already logged in, to deposit the one or more near, and then you'd be able to, once you did that, the button would be, you know, alive, you can click it and do whatever you want to do. But that's kind of like the idea, like the next, next steps of this DAO. Um, now, when people are allowed to click add proposals, it will not give them any actual voting power. So it'll allow them to add proposals like they could already do, but it's not actually going to let them vote on those proposals and pass them through or anything like that. It is purely the ability to add proposals that is going to come from staking the one Marma J. Now, 
Why is that valuable? Why is that needed? It's honestly not that valuable and not that needed, but the idea is all the, the Marma J tokens that are staked in the DAO will then be used um, in other platforms. So for example, right now, the most basic way of using those funds would be to set up some sort of trading bot, right? That was earning DAI, let's say, um, to our DAO funds. So let's say we had a hundred Marmade tokens staked in this DAO. We can then use Ref Finance, for example. Now we've shown on Ref Tools, right? And we looked up the token and we looked up, I'm not even sure how we got to that chart. It was a wonderful chart though. Um, now I wanna find it again, right? Liquidity. Oh, that's not how you find it. Let's see. It's not gonna show up here. Anyways, the, the point, um, how did I find that wonderful page? I'm gonna have to open up a new page, I feel like. Cause I, I, I don't wanna lose that. That was actually very, very helpful. Oh no. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, yeah, the actual pool. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna bookmark this because this is actually one of the cooler cooler uh, pages I've seen. Um, so the idea is that we've we've seen clearly that there's volatility in the Marmor J token expect on the die pair. So the idea is if we as a foundation were running our own trading bot that was earning die um, and putting that die back into the DAO's funds. You know, on a consistent basis, we could have some funds allocated where, you know, the idea would be those who are submitting proposals might be able to earn extra rewards uh, and we might be able to support our community continually that way. Um, so hopefully this video gives a clear understanding of like how the Marmajay token works, what are the plans for the Marmajay token, um, how is the token currently being used? I mean, I think... Like when it comes to this part of the white paper, the like I want it to be very, very clear um, how the token's currently being used. So for example, um, how many tokens are there? There's 21,019. Where are these tokens located? Uh, for example, when you go to REF and you go to you know our liquidity, you can see that the majority of, the, well, quite a few of the tokens are right here on REF. And if you ever wanna see, okay, like, you know, how much tokens are in each pool? You could just type out Mar Marma J, and you'll see how much is in each pool specifically. That can be kind of complicated at times, and so the best way, honestly, of figuring out how much Marma J is actually in Ref is going to Sodaki and going to Total Value Locked. And if you just type in Marma J, you'll see that there is. Yeah, uh, currently 5,609 uh, Marma J tokens currently in REF, okay? So that is the current value of Marma J tokens that are locked. So now if you do some some fun math, let's get, let's get like a somewhat exact number. Um, so let's say on Sodaki, right? There's this much. And the total amount we had was, you know, 21, 19, and you're gonna minus 5,000. So this was pretty much the amount that was in the DAO. And let's say we've given out around at least, let's say 500 tokens so far. So it's probably, as I said previously, between 4,000 and 5,000 Marma J tokens in the DAO, um, with which our main purpose for these tokens is to distribute them um, effectively um, to the to community members that support the Marmaj Foundation, and that's that is the goal. We're going to continue giving out Marmaj tokens and bounties. We're going to continue. That's, that's pretty much actually it. The only way to earn Marmaj tokens, arguably, um, is either to, to buy them on Ref, which we do not suggest or recommend. They're there more so so that when people earn Marmaj, they go have a, they have this price discovery so that they can sell them and experiment with other. Uh, more so they, they could swap from mom data other tokens when they use them and then experiment with other things so for example in our gitcoin grant this time around our, our and for the for the foreseeable future the plan is to take those funds convert them to, pe to 
pan valid tokens pan tokens you don't know what that is that's totally fine uh we're going to bring those pan tokens across the bridge and create more liquidity for the marmaj token so the idea is if someone wants to get in on the pan community and, and explore that they could actually do a marmaj bounty easily swap from marmaj to pan um, support you know by either paying some fees to the marmaj dao and they're also able to efficiently and easily you know experiment with a new community um so that's like the basic idea of like what's going on and how much tokens we have um but yes as i said let's go to the marmaj.org so we can show the blog and yes of course you can write a blog and, and some of these blog posts actually this blog post uh this blog post uh i guess even this blog post oh cool uh all the blog posts since august 13th uh, so i mean the, that's almost february so all these most recent blog posts were all funded by pay proposals from the DAO. And this Marmajay DAO proposal submission guide um, will actually explain how you can go through it. So you go on, you post a new topic on the forums. Um, you know, we discuss and we, you know, we elaborate and we ask questions off chain. Excuse me. Then once we approve it, right, we're going to deliberate a proposal, uh, we'll leave comments. And then once we approve it, you can actually go to the DAO, add a new proposal of payout type. And here's an example. So, you know, you're going to receive it at project underscore adoshot.near. You're going to say, you know, I completed a bounty. And that should actually have the forum post in there as well. So I guess we should probably edit this picture uh, to show some sort of forum post in there. Um, then we're going to say, you know, fungible token, marmaj.token.near, and then how much you want to receive. So we should probably also say, like, I completed a specific bounty and put, like, a, a 10 near in there. But anyways, this is how it would work. Um, as you go through that, you know, we disseminate the funds after we vote on them, like I've explained. And that is kind of the current use case of the Marmaj token. As I said, our plan is that our DAO is eventually going to adopt this token to support the Marmaj Foundation, where for now, we're just kind of having a way to stake your Marmaj, and that will allow you to submit a proposal to our DAO. Now, if you do not have Marmaj to stake, that is totally fine. Um, the idea is that, you know, you, you'll be able to earn Marmaj in other ways. Uh, one of the main reasons we're not actually implementing this now is because logically if you if not many people have the token and someone wants to do their first bounty they're not actually going to have marmaj with which to click add proposal right that defeats the entire purpose so the idea right now is we're just in dissemination phase we want everyone and anyone who wants to support the community to come on board submit a proposal on the on the, on the dow off chain so you know we want you to come to come to gov dot Come to gov.nira.org. This is kind of the main homepage for it. On the left, you can see creatives. In the creative section, you'll see Marmaj Foundation. We'd love for anyone to come out here, click new topic, go through what you see in the DAO proposal submission guides, you know, post a new topic in the near forums, use the Marmaj tags. So you come here in the forums, you use the Marmaj tag. Beautiful. You start whatever else the guide says. Awesome. Once you do that, you come to our DAO, add new proposal. Again, go through all of that. Once you receive the Marmaj tokens, you're good to go. You're good to start experimenting. Maybe you just sell them all. Maybe you maybe you just go to swap. You're like, gosh, I want to get rid of these things. You take 10, you dump them, $107. Awesome, great job. Or maybe you want to sell half, like I showed earlier, go to a pool, provide liquidity, whatever kind of floats your boat. The idea is, though, is once we've dis disseminated more of these tokens and we have maybe a few hundred token holders, we're going to upgrade our DAO to, in, to make it so that you have to actually stake at least one of these tokens in order to submit a proposal. The idea is that with only 21,019 tokens, we're probably going to have less than 100 core community members that are actually submitting proposals. But they would they should hopefully be submitting potentially larger proposals that might actually have their, their whole own ecosystem to them. So for example, if a DAO ends up holding that one Marma J and that DAO stakes it in here, then anyone on that in that community or anyone in that DAO will be able to benefit from the Marma J community. So for now it's a lot of individuals who are submitting proposals. 
the idea moving forward would that would be that you know maybe the NXM Guild uh, helps us do a lot of music uh, collaborations, or maybe Create Base Guild comes on, and, and instead of having to join our council, um, our council can stay really small, but then we can have this second uh, area called token holders. And that could be where we have some extra functionality and rewards distributed for, for the ecosystem. Um, there is a small example of that currently. So for example, like, I mean, multiple councils, so if you look at Ref Finance, for example, uh, let's actually jump into the DAO. You'll see that there's a core small council, and then there's this community uh, standpoint with a bunch of people who have different, you know, governance roles. So the idea would be we're probably always going to have a pretty small council of like maybe three, four, five people in the Marma J DAO, but we want to have a relatively large group of community members, and we actually don't think that the majority of these people will always be. Um, like individually owned accounts. The idea is that the majority of the accounts that we have in community in the long term will hopefully be DAOs. So hopefully we'll see, you know, uh, open shard alliance dot Sputnik dash DAO dot near. Or maybe we'll see, you know, city, city node guilds program dot astro DAO dot near, right? So the idea is that multiple different DAOs from all over the near ecosystem can now take part in the community of Marma J, hopefully, um, and move forward that way. Now, there are other issues there as well. Like I said, I want this to be possible to the Marma J website so that someone can just come to Marma J, log in with Near, and be able to interact that way. So there's things that we have to think about. That's why this is white paper part one. Um, I'm sure Bianca will take some of this information. We'll get it to a nice blog post explaining how the tokens used currently and some plans for the future. Um, but the idea is we're trying to iterate on this relatively slowly, securely and safely um, so that we're mostly just supporting the community and growing as we do. Um, once we're able to have a efficient way for um, community members to stake and maybe to hold this DAO in their, hold this Marmite token in their DAO and have their DAO come on board, like an idea I can think of would be that anyone on the council of a DAO would then also be able to submit proposals. So now this actually extends functionality and utility to other DAOs. Now they might actually have an increased reason to hold Marwa J and they might be actually have something to incentivize more council members to come on their DAO saying, hey, if you come on to our DAO over here, XYZ DAO, you'll also be able to go to Marwa J and submit proposals. So that's actually a pretty interesting way to solve that problem. But I hope that helps. Um, I'm gonna. This video is over now. You know, that's Chloe Lewis from the Marmaje Foundation. Oh, I miss those little those little buggers, Ymir and Krista from the beach. Um, but yeah, like I didn't. You know, the Marmaje Foundation works towards spreading love and positivity by creating and supporting various products and ventures. Um, so the main purpose of the token um, is to kind of spread the littlest acts of kindness we can. So even if it's only five or 10 Marma J, we will, it really can go a long way. So whether that's educating people how to use ref, whether it's supporting people and their creativity, whether it's, you know, funding beach cleanups or feeding stray dogs or creating NFTs and artwork from disabled uh, students at different schools. The idea is all of this comes together to support the Marma J Foundation and our community and we use the Marma J token as this, you know, solidifying, you know, glue or this, you know, um, ecosystem wide support that continues to help us grow. So, for example, all the fees we earn from the trading fees stay with Marma and we earn, you know, say more die and more Marma J. And that's just more tokens that we could use then to redistribute to the community. Um, but I hope this was helpful. I hope uh, it helps other communities potentially understand how they might implement a token that's useful for their community. This is pretty high level, in my opinion, which is where the white paper should stay, uh, in my opinion. If people want to dig into specifics, please come into our chat, ask all the questions you'd like. Um, there's, you know, there's no like reward splitting or any kind of you know rewards coming out of these tokens. It's just a utility token for you to experiment and have fun with. Um, any rewards that get distributed to community members will not necessarily be based upon token holdings or you know token whatsoever. Um, it is definitely more so 
which community members are supporting the foundation most efficiently and most effectively. And that's where rewards will get directed um, through votes from the council and the community. Um, so if you want to take part, uh, please come on board, um, submit a proposal to the Marmaje DAO. We'd love to, you know, okay, I might not on the right DAO anymore. Uh, so, you, you know, change DAO. Um, you know, we'd love for you to come out here, uh, come submit a proposal to earn 10 Marmaje, of course, after going to the forum. We need to go to the forum first because, you know, we've got to do off-chain collaboration before on-chain collaboration. Um, but yeah, we'd love to see you in our chats, Telegram. Uh, we'd love to see you on the forums. And yeah, hopefully this is helpful. And uh, see y'all soon.